Hello there. Welcome to the Saroy channel. I've got such a lovely big Bigfoot encounter for you this evening. Um, it all happened when a lady during the coronavirus got incredibly bored and found a diary of someone who recorded some Bigfoot sightings. So let's get started. I know you're going to enjoy this story. Dear Sarah and all your listeners, I'm writing to tell you what I uncovered here at my home in St. Paul's, Minnesota. My family has lived in this part of the world for generations. Anyway, because of the lockdowns we have experienced this year since early 2020, we have been advised to keep social distancing and all of that stuff because of the COVID-19 virus. Naturally, like many people, I had tons of free time on my hands. And the question was what to do to eliminate the inevitable boredom that arises in times like this. That was when I decided to take down the antique box from my attic and look through all the family photographs and letters going back for generations. Well, guess what? I stumbled across an old diary written by an ancestor of mine, and it mentions her Bigfoot encounters. Although she did not know it was Bigfoot at the time, I found her diary both fascinating and interesting, especially the Bigfoot accounts. So here goes. Dear Diary, December the 8th, 1941. Yesterday was a terrible, terrible day, and one I shall never forget as long as I live. The Japanese did a sneak sky and sea raid all on Pearl Harbor. Everyone here is in disbelief, despair, and shock. We never imagined this would happen to any one of us. Everybody is determined to fight back. Mr. Hardy, who is rushing, said, Russian, said he would do anything to help America because our country saved him during challenging times in the Soviet Union. A lot of the immigrants feel the same way and everyone is feeling so patriotic. Even Mrs. Taylor has put up an American flag in her bakery window for all to see. What makes me feel enraged is that while those Japs were talking peace in Washington, all the time they had another agenda. Yesterday that day they destroyed so much. They hit hangars, air and military bases, and destroyed three of our destroyers. President Franklin Roosevelt is furious, and he gave an amazing, encouraging speech yesterday at 12.30 p.m., asking Congress to declare war on Japan. I'm so glad about that. Today on the news, they announced that they would freeze up Japanese bank accounts here in America as an act of retaliation. Good for him, I say, up to Franklin Roosevelt. Oh, and by the way, I saw this funny creature in our garden yesterday. I still cannot work out what he is. He's big, I would say. He's about seven foot tall. His long arms are like a monkey and he has enormous chest. But I noticed his legs are lean, but very strong to be sure. His whole body is covered with brownish hair that looks just like a bear's. But it looks as if he rolls in the mud, possibly as some kind of an insect repellent, I suspect. But he doesn't smell very good. It's a kind of witty, sweaty, garbagey kind of smell. And I think that's what you get from rolling in the mud. The face is funny looking because it's almost human-like, but it's not totally. The eyes are big and brown and the mouth is slender and the nose is squashed looking. Mum saw him too and she screamed and ran into the house telling everyone that there was a monster in the garden. Dad ran around the garden waving his spade in a threatening stance. Sorry, Dad ran around the garden, waving his spade in a threatening stance. He really looked ridiculous. Anyway, the animal bolted. I was not scared because the animal was as curious about me as I was about him. I could tell by the way he was watching me when I hung the washing on the line, and I didn't feel threatened at all. Mum is refusing to go outdoors because of the creature, and has relegated me to hang out the washing in future on my own. She really is a baby, shoes. Honestly, you would not think she was 30 already. She's not young anymore, and yet she behaves like a little child. Dear Diary, 12th of December, 1941. Everyone is very tense at the moment, and all ears are glued to the radio, listening to what is happening in the war effort. Eddie's son, Carl, is determined to fight the Japs, and so he's enrolling in the American Navy. Good for him, I say. I haven't told anyone, but I really fancy Carl. He's a really stunning guy, and the fact that he's going to fight the Japs makes me like him even more. But that's my secret diary. I saw the creature today. Again, can you believe it? He really is human-like in so many ways, and hides behind the tree watching me. 
I really kind of like him. I know that sounds crazy. And I don't even mind him much. But I did see that he stole one of Aunt Maple's chickens because I saw it in his arms, minus the head. But I guess he needs to eat like the rest of us. I'll not be telling Aunt Maple what happened to it because it'll upset her. December the 14th, 1941. Aunt Maple is very upset because three more of her chickens have vanished. But we do have so many of them, so I'm not worried. Aunt Maple accused the next door neighbours of stealing our chickens and had a huge row with them. So I think we have officially fallen out with them. I have decided that I will not be telling her who the real culprit of the missing chickens is. I saw him again today, the creature I mean. I wonder why he is all alone and if there are any more out there like him. There must be, I concluded, but he is bold for coming into our garden. Maybe the other creatures are shy and keep their distance, because I do not believe this creature is even recognised by science. December the 18th, 1941. Three more chickens gone since I last posted, and Aunt Maple is beside herself with anger. She sent a note to the neighbours telling them that they are not invited or welcome to cocktails on Christmas Eve. I spotted the creature yesterday and he watched me for a while. Then I heard a strange wooing sound from the woods and then he was off. I guess he has a family in the woods because he responded to the call so fast and leapt up on his feet like a helicopter on a launching pad. This creature is athletic and agile and his feet seem to have shock absorbers just like our cats. I've never seen anything take off like that at such lightning speed. He covered our yard in seconds and for me it would have taken several dozen steps walking over the very same area. Better go, Mummy's calling me to make dinner. We're having chicken, potatoes and carrots all over again. I'm getting sick and tired of the same old food, night after night and day after day. But Mum says in these difficult times, we must ju just buckle up our belts and go for the ride like they did in World War I. Well, those are the accounts that I have from this lady's diary about the hairy man, which I believe without a shadow of a doubt was Bigfoot. I hope you and your listeners enjoyed the story. Oh, what an absolutely phenomenal story. A lovely account of the Pearl Harbor bombing, which happened in America. So what a wonderful story. Until next time, good night. <laughs>